Hey there folks, welcome back. Ricky Tran here with Cutlery and More. And today we are going to show you how to sharpen your Wurstoff on some whetstones. Uh, this is a very exciting process. This is something that uh, lots of people love and a lot of our subscribers have requested it. So we're gonna go through some of the basics. For our whetstones, we are using the Bob Kramer by Zwilling whetstones. These are fantastic stones. They come in a 400, 1000, and a 5000 kit stone with your base and a dressing or a cleaning stone. If you are not familiar with these stones, these are very, very good stones. They are splash and goes, so they require no soaking before using, which is very handy for people who are on the go or just don't have that sort of time to wait around for uh, 50 minutes or a half an hour for your stones to soak. You can literally throw some water on them and they are ready to go. So this is the 400 grit stone, which we will start off with. So what we are going to do now is consider sacrilege by many. We are going to dull our knife. So we're gonna run it on the rod here, on the honing rod. When it comes to hand sharpening, degrees can be very confusing and very intimidating. Here's one way to kind of forget about all of that. With hand sharpening, the most important thing is consistency, not angles. For the sake of this argument, you can sharpen a knife at 18 degrees, which is considered a very wide angle, and get a better edge than a knife that is sharpened at 12 degrees if you hold a better consistent angle. Now here are two very basic methods you can use to actually find your sharpening angle. The first is by actually just using your finger. If you place your finger on the whetstone and you place the spine of the knife on your fingernail, that will give you roughly anywhere between a 15 to 17 degree of a sharpening angle. If you have slightly bigger hands, then that may be a 17 degree angle or so. Again, please focus on the fact that you are not worried about your angles and more worried about your consistency of your sharpening stroke. On the other side of the knife, I use my hand that I'm actually holding the knife with, and I simply lean the spine onto my index finger. And again, that will give me roughly a 15 degree angle with my size hands. If you wanna go a little bit more in depth and find out what actual sharpening angle the knife actually has on it, here is a method you can use. You can put the knife on the whetstone and you can simply start dragging the knife toward you. And what you wanna do is you wanna start leaning the knife, the spine of the knife toward the stone. And when you feel that the knife loses traction, you back off just a hair and that will give you your sharpening angle. Or it will actually tell you exactly what angle the knife is actually sharpened at. Now you don't know what number that is, but you definitely know that based on feel, that is where that sharpening angle is. Now there are many methods, as I have said before, uh, in sharpening. There is the push and pull method, which looks like this. There is the crescent, the back and forth crescent, which looks more like this. And then there's a the single stroke method, which is what I'm gonna show you guys today. And it's from heel to tip. Now the reason we're going with this method today is because it's the most easy to learn and also gives you a really consistent result, which is really important for most people who are getting into whetstones. In future videos, we will cover the different sharpening methods with whetstones, but today we'll stick with the very basic. Also, another thing is when you hear about sharpening, people always talk about the burr. What is the burr? So to quickly explain what a burr is, essentially this is your knife's edge and a burr is a, a lip of material or a slight bit of material that folds over to one side or the other. And you're always kind of detecting for the burr to figure out where that, uh, you know, where your apex of your knife is. If you can detect no burr, it basically means that the apex of your knife is completely straight, which gives you a very good edge. And so with this method here, you're not looking for a burr because you're going back and forth in between every stroke. And so the burr never really gets a chance to develop. What you're doing now is you're taking off just a bit of micro materials on each side of the cutting edge. And so that by the time you have uh, gone to the 5,000 grit stone, the edge is very, very clean. So this method here will help you bypass the whole burr talk. So we are now ready to begin. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the knife's heel onto the stone and I'm gonna find my angle, which is right around here. And we're gonna go from heel to tip in one smooth motion. Okay, now if you wanna get used to it, you can go a few times. See, and you very gently place a knife onto the stone and you drag in one motion. And the key is, is you follow the arc of the knife. The radius of the cutting edge will help you guide the knife. And so you're not forcing your angles at all. You're not forcing how to turn the knife. You're allowing the knife to communicate with the stone and the knife will guide itself. Now the same thing on the other side. I simply find the right angle that I'm gonna sharpen at, which for me is right where my spine 
hits my finger uh, nail and I go in that direction. Now you may notice that I'm actually using my left hand uh, to put a finger on the other side or the other half of the knife. What this does is it acts as a counterweight and so it allows the knife to be sharpened at a very consistent angle from heel to tip without the knife tilting at all. So if you look really closely here, if I use only one hand to actually sharpen this knife, you'll see that the line that I'm drawing is not very clean. It's not very smooth and it is not a perfect arc in line with the radius of the cutting edge. It's a little off. And so by having a counterweight, what you do is you are balancing the knife out and allowing the knife to follow through in a very smooth transition from heel to tip. Now there is no magical number as to how many strokes to do. You simply are trying to listen for the knife and listen how the knife is reacting on the stone. And when you hear a very clean stroke from heel to tip, you generally can stop there. So I'm gonna go 15 strokes on each side and see how we do. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure if that was 15 strokes or not, but it should be close. So we're gonna dry our knife off really quickly here. So a really quick lesson on stone grit. We have a 400, a 1000, and a 5000 wet stone in this kit here. So anything below a 1000 grit stone is generally reserved for knives that are very dull. If you have a knife that is fairly sharp, you can simply hop on a 1000 grit stone, and anything between a 1000 to 3000 grit stone is considered a medium stone, and anything above 3000 is considered a fine stone. And so this here is a 1000 grit stone. If you're sharpening your knives very often, such as once a week or even more frequently than that, you simply can go to a 1000 grit stone and bypass the 400 grit stone in this case. So we're gonna load the stone surface with some water here. And with this, with this technique here, we are not going to change anything up. We are simply changing stones. The technique of the single stroke will be exactly the same. We don't change our angles. We don't change our pressure. We simply do the same thing and allow the stone to do the work for us. Okay, here we go. You can hear this stone here is much more quiet. It's taking off less material. Okay, so you may be wondering, what is the stone that I have next to me? What is a dressing stone? Well, dressing stones are really a cleaning stone. So when you see right here, this is a 5,000 grit stone, and you see these little marks, these are called load up. And they don't really hinder the stone all that much, but they sometimes can slow the stone's cutting performance down. So when that happens, and you just wanna make sure that you have a really clean stone, you take your cleaning stone, or your dressing stone, and you're simply running, run the, the stone up and down the whetstone, and it pulls off excess material. And so now we have a cleaner, a cleaner edge to work with, or a cleaner cutting surface to work with. Okay, that's really it. And uh, these are typically soaking stones, so I haven't soaked this one here, so it seems a little dry. But you soak them for just a few minutes before you actually use them. Uh, but even without being soaked, they do a pretty good job of removing load up off of the stones. Okay, so now we are on the 5,000 grit stone. So in terms of strokes here, it's the same thing. You, there is no magical number. You simply run the knife on the stone and just see how it sounds and see how it feels. And also when you start seeing materials come off of the knife onto the stone, that generally means that you are done.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you guys how this stone looks for now. It's fairly clean. Okay. And so you can see all of the obvious black marks are gone, or the gray marks are gone. And so we're going to run the knife on the stone a couple more times and show you. Okay, so we see very light lines. Yeah. Okay, so now we're still seeing material because the stone will always pull off material, but we're seeing less and less of it. And so that generally tells me that the knife is ready and the edge does feel pretty good. And so to test your edge, I don't recommend you running your fingers up and down the knife. You can run it sideways along the cutting edge, but never run it with the knife. And we are gonna draw the knife off and do a really quick cut test here. Okay, so we have some just basic magazine paper here and we're gonna do some cutting for you and show you how clean the edge is at this point. Okay, so very, very clean. And that was only just after a few minutes of sharpening and very easy to do. This is an edge that can be used in any professional kitchen. Okay, and all it took was really just a few minutes. Uh, most of this video was me talking and uh, walking you guys through the process. But in terms of actual sharpening, it was not anything more than maybe five minutes of actual sharpening. So this method here is definitely a method that I recommend you trying out if you are getting into hand sharpening for the first time. Um, hand sharpening is a lot of fun. A lot of folks love it because you get a very special connection with your knife and your whetstones. The wealth of knowledge and information is vast out there. So there is a huge community of people who love sharpening their knives with whetstones. You also have me here with the team at Cutlery and More to help you guys out through that process. Now we are doing video requests, that's right. So if you see any product at cutlerymore.com, simply tell us what product you are looking at and then the information you are looking for and we will do our best to get a video up for you as soon as possible. We'll have links to each of the products that were featured in today's video as well as a link to our website in the description below. Thank you for being with us today. We'll catch you in the next video.